Welcome back to the Financial Freedom Show. My name is Rob Berger. In today's video, we're going to be talking about investment fees, both fees you pay to an advisor, also the expense ratios, the fees you pay for the mutual funds that you own. These are easy things to ignore, to forget about. You don't get, it's not like you get billed each month for these fees. I kind of wish we did, then that would be more real to us if it was an actual bill we had to pay. They just quietly take it out of our investment portfolios and drain our wealth quarter by quarter. It can have a huge impact on our wealth. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to do four things in this video. First, we're going to actually take a look at the numbers. I'm going to show you in black and white on the screen here on a calculator just how big an impact relatively seemingly small fees can have on your wealth. Then we're going to ask an important question. Well, so what? I mean, yeah, maybe we pay a lot of fees, but maybe the investments that we own are just so good they're worth the cost, right? I mean, maybe they're just earning so much more than the average fund or the market that we're willing to pay those fees. Well, we're going to debunk that myth today. The third thing we're going to talk about is how you can figure out what fees you're paying. Uh, particularly when it comes to mutual funds, even inside a 401k, it's very easy to figure out how much they're costing you. I'm going to walk you through, show you exactly how to do that. And then at the end, I'm going to show you a free tool that I use every day where you can actually connect all your investment accounts. And not only will it calculate all of your fees for all of these investments, it will show you just how big the impact those fees will have on your investment portfolio over time. All right, so let's get to it. I'm going to show you on the screen to begin with. Uh, this is from Vanguard, and we need to set a baseline before we look at fees. We need to understand some assumptions about what our returns are going to be. I actually used this data in my book, Retire Before Mom and Dad, and what this shows you, and I'll leave links, by the way, to all of this in the description below, but this shows you the average annual return of different portfolios. As you can see, it's from 1926 to, uh, to, uh, to 2019, so almost 100 years worth of data. And the one I'm going to use today is the 80-20 portfolio. So imagine you have 80% of your investments in stock mutual funds and 20% of your investments in bond mutual funds. Well, if you did that, uh, over a long period of time, you'd average, as you can see here, 9.7%. Your best year, 1933, you would have actually made 45%, uh, but, but that would have come just two years after your worst year, where you lost almost 35%. Now, uh, this data has actually changed. When I wrote my book just uh, a year or two ago, this portfolio showed a 9.3% average return. It's gone up because 2018, 2019 were pretty good years. Whether this is going to repeat in the future doesn't matter for our purposes. Uh, we can use it just to show the impact of fees. And to do that, I'm going to use a calculator. Again, I'll have links to all of this uh, in the notes below. But this is a, a calculator that I built. And what we're going to assume is you have no money to begin with. We'll just pick $1,000 a month, uh, just as an example, and we'll do it over 40 years. So the idea here is maybe you start saving at 25 and you work until you're 65, and we're going to have this 9.7% return. Now, the first question for you is, any guess as to how much you'll have after 40 years? The number might surprise you. $5.8 million. Now, of course, we haven't factored in inflation, which over a 40-year period is significant. Uh, we could do that, for example. We could assume a lower return to, to, a, to factor in inflation, but it doesn't really matter for our purposes because our goal is to figure out how fees would affect our, our final outcome. So let's assume that we pay an advisor 1%. That's sort of the standard fee in the industry. You can find cheaper. You can find more expensive. But let's just assume we pay someone 1% to take our money and stick it in a couple of mutual funds for us, which is effectively what they do. So the, the result is, on, on an after-fee basis, we don't earn 9.7, we earn 8.7. How would that affect our outcome? So remember, at 9.7, we're at 5.8 million. Let's hit Calculate. Drops to 4.3 million. We lose a truckload of wealth. Remember, at 9.7, Instead of 4.3, we have 5.8. We've lost $1.5 million from just a, a, a seemingly small 1% fee. And if you think that's bad, 
It actually gets worse because I found that a lot of advisors that will charge 1% or more don't tend to put folks in index funds uh, that are low fees. They put them in actively managed funds that not only charge a lot in terms of an expense ratio, which is what they call the fee, uh, that mutual funds charge, uh, they charge a lot and they underperform index funds. So it's like, you know, you, you, you normally you, you get what you pay for, but with investing, you often get what you don't pay for. So let's just imagine that this, this expensive advisor takes 1% and they put you in mutual funds that also cost 1%. So now your actual after fee return is down to 7.7%. In that scenario, our 5.8 million becomes 3.2 million. Now, if you're new to this, I know these numbers don't seem possible. It, first of all, it probably doesn't seem possible that $1,000 a month can turn into 5.8 million. That's just the power of compounding. But even if you accept that, 1% fee, 2% fee, it's really going to erase millions of dollars of wealth. It absolutely is, in part because we're looking at it over a long period of time, 40 years of compounding. But the key takeaway here is that seemingly small fees matter. By the way, before we leave this calculator, let's go back to our 9.7% assumption. Remember, that's 5.8 million. Let's imagine you've got an advisor that only charges half percent, and they put you in index funds that only cost a few basis points, so that let's say your total cost is, well, we'll call it 0.7, and so your after fee return is 9. So that's I think by all uh, standards, that would be a relatively reasonable fee. And it may be, if you need help, uh, something that you need to, to pay, but you shouldn't do it without understanding the impact, right? So now, all we've done is gone from 9.7% return to 9%. Our 5.8 million drops to 4.7. So even that seemingly small fee still costs us a million dollars in wealth right, and one-sixth of our wealth over a 40-year period. Now, at this point, you know, you might be saying, well, Rob, that's great, but you're just assuming that these funds and this advisor won't actually add value, that uh, the returns that we'll get uh, won't be any better and maybe even worse. I mean, maybe we pay 1%, but what if we get returns that are 1.5% better? Well, study after study after study has shown that paying high investment fees, whether to an advisor or to expensive mutual funds, doesn't result in, in, in better outcomes. And in fact, I'll show you a couple of them right now uh, on the screen. Let's take a look. The first one was a study, this was published in 2020, a little under uh, a year ago from S&P Global. And they were looking at what percentage of actively managed funds, that is funds that try to pick the right stocks, underperform just a, a, an index. And you can see they've got some data here by year, and the vast majority of years, more, more actively managed funds underperform. So in 2014, 86.9% of actively managed funds underperformed a simple index. Uh, 2019, uh, the most recent year when this study was published, 70% of, of actively managed funds underperformed. Now, you can find years where uh, less than 50% of actively managed funds underperformed. Do you notice anything about these years, 2009, 5, 2005, 2013, 2003? They tend to be years when the, the market is down or, not, or generally not doing well. It's true that during that time, more actively managed funds can outperform the index, although not by many. And by the way, there's no guarantee if you pick an actively managed fund, you're going to pick one that actually does outperform the index. But here's what we know, that over time, instead of looking at, at this from a year-by-year -year basis, we say take a 10-year period. The results aren't so good for actively managed funds. Um, this is for large cap funds, and you can see for 10 consecutive years, they underperformed, right? 71% underperformed over a long period of time, and it gets worse. Of the large cap funds, look at this, 89% underperformed the S&P over the past decade. So when we look at it over a 10-year period, it gets worse. The same is true for both mid and small cap. They tend to have better uh, outcomes as compared to index funds year by year. But look at this right here. Let me highlight this for you. 84% of mid cap funds and 89% of small cap funds 
underperform the indexes over the longer 10-year period. All right, so now that we know uh, that expenses matter, how do we find the expense ratios of mutual funds? And it's, it's really easy to do. I'm going to show you on the screen now. Uh, I use Morningstar a lot. So if you know the ticker symbol of the mutual fund you want to uh, evaluate, uh, you can go to Morningstar and just type it in here. So we'll do, I'll just use VTSAX, which is Vanguard's Total Stock Market Index Fund, some a fund that I own. And you'll find the expense ratio right here. You can see it's 0.04%. So that's just four basis points. Remember, 100 basis points is 1%. It's not, it's not free, but boy, it's about as close to free as you can get. Now, it's not always quite this, this easy. I actually went into my 401k and I, I decided to pick a fund I'd never heard of. So that's what you're seeing on the screen. This is my 401k is at Transamerica. There was a link to, to this information inside my 401k. Uh, one thing it didn't show me was the ticker symbol, which is a little frustrating Transamerica. Appreciate it if you could show that to us. But they did show us this. This is data from, if we scroll down, you can see, it's from Morningstar, and it takes some hunting, but we can find right here. This is the expense ratio. It's 72 basis points. Now, as actively managed funds go, that's not horrible, but we've already seen from the calculator just how erosive, is that the right word? Corrosive. Dest <laughs> how about destructive? Uh, even a small expense ratio can be. 72 basis points is huge, and I won't go into the details of the performance of this fund, but I compared it to its benchmark, which is the Russell 2000. And I can tell you that a Russell 2000 index fund has absolutely clobbered the performance of the Delaware small cap value fund. Now, before we leave how to find an expense ratio, let's do some investigative work. Remember, I told you they don't have the ticker symbol. They don't give us the ticker symbol. So how could we find it? Well, we have the name right here, right? And we know what share class it is. Now, don't be intimidated by this, but mutual funds have different share classes. This is an R6 class. I had to Google that. I didn't know what that was, but it's pretty simple. R just stands for retirement. And this is a class of shares that you will often find in qualified retirement plans like a 401k or a 403b. And believe it or not, this is the cheap version of the fund. It's 72 basis points. There are different share classes of this exact same fund that cost well over 1%. Okay, with this information, we can though find this in Morningstar to do some additional research. I'm gonna paste it right here and we'll see, huh, not what I wanted. Let's try it again. Let me type it in. Maybe that'll help Morningstar out a little bit. Delaware small cap value. Here we go. Whoops. Oh, there it is. You can see the R class share is right here. You can see there are different share classes. We're going to go to R6. And does it show the same 72 basis points? It sure does. So the data is correct, right? This maps to what we saw over here. And now in Morningstar, I can do additional analysis if I want to. I walk through this, though, just to show you how you can use Morningstar to find the expense ratios with the ticker symbol or with the mutual fund's name, and you got to know the, the, the share class as well. So it takes a little bit of work, but look, it's not that hard, and it's critical. We know that these expenses can destroy our wealth, so I can tell you, in my own 401k, I will not be investing in this mutual fund. And it, by the way, that analysis only took me a couple of minutes. It's not, it doesn't take long. All right, so now, I want to get to the last thing, and that is using the tool that I mentioned. It's called Personal Capital. I use it every day. It's free, uh, and I'll leave links below uh, in the notes, but you can connect all of your investment accounts, both 401ks, 403bs, IRAs, uh, taxable accounts. I'm told you can even connect Bitcoin, although I'm not really sure why you'd want to invest in that. In any event, once you've connected it, they have what's called a retirement fee analyzer that will take all of your investments, it knows all of the fees that they charge, it will show you what that is and how they will impact your wealth over time. Let me show you what that looks like. All right, here we are looking at the Retirement Fee Analyzer. You go to it by going to Planning here and then Retirement Fee Analyzer. And you can see that 
um, I'm looking at all of my accounts. We can actually select this and, and narrow it down to just your retirement accounts, just a single 401k if you want to. And you'll notice that they use 50 basis points as their benchmark. Mine, as you can see, are just eight basis points. That is my overall expense ratio across every investment that I own. 401ks, IRAs, Roths, traditional, taxable, everything. So I, I, what I preach, I also live, right? Expense ratios matter. And even with expense ratios, over time, it will have an impact on my wealth. And as you can see, they put it at about 1%. Now, if I were to actually get, get rid of my taxable accounts, uh, the weighted average expense ratio jumps to 14 basis points, and that affects about 2% of my earnings. The reason is, inside of some 401ks that I have, uh, I have limited investment options. And while I still have good ones, 14 basis points, I think, is a, a, a really good and low expense ratio. It's not as, I don't have total control. If I did, it'd probably be even lower. But my overall expense ratio is just eight uh, basis points, and I think that is A+. plus. But I'll try to get it lower <laughs> as I can. So I hope this video has been helpful for you. I know that expense ratios and the expenses you pay an advisor may not be the sexiest of topics, but I'm telling you, they have a huge impact over your wealth over the long term. Now, what about folks in retirement? How do expenses affect what we know of as the 4% rule? You know, I've done a complete series on the 4% rule. And um, in the next video, I'm going to talk about how these expenses can, believe it or not, completely wreck the 4% rule and your retirement. So if you haven't subscribed, I encourage you to do that now. Hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. I'll help you out any way I can. And until next time, remember, the best thing money can buy is financial freedom.